all the time, like through Instagram or uh, people asking what they should study. Most people go and study architecture when they think to be a production designer, and that's great. I kind of wish I had some of those skills, but it's almost like, you know, you'll end up knowing too much mm -hmm. about one thing, about the design and drawing skills for mm -hmm. within architecture. Having a really good education in that will limit where you end up in the art department because you'll become the set designer, uh -huh. which is a different job. Like that's the person who draws all day. And if you love that, mm -hmm. then that's what you should do. But if you want to production design, you need many more tools. And so it's not just one subject in school. It's kind of why I will say art history for your basics. Because it opens up your world, probably, yeah. in terms of... You learn how to look. Yes, I agree. You learn how to look at, like, Southeast Asian art. You study, like, beginning of civilization to, like, court painters. You get all the history. You get a good sense of understanding and being able to look at something and immediately know what its story is. So that's such a good skill. But then there's all these other things you need, like math, in order to conceptualize a space and understand how to build. And then, you know, like the, the color work and the paint, understanding composition. That's the thing when people say, how do I learn this job? My advice is always like, first of all, do, do your education because there's so much more that you get out of that university mm -hmm. so you know there's two approaches like if you're not a school person don't waste your time <laughs> just yeah. get in there and start working and learn the skills and do like every job in the art department you possibly can and work for good people like if you are working for people who you admire and because I, I definitely work for people who weren't good and you, you learn from that too like yeah, you learn true. by what, working with people but I worked with really great designers, like as I was learning, great designers. And God, you learn so much and it's really hard work. You can't stick with this job unless you really, really love it because the hours are so long, a lot of uh, pressure, you know, yeah. when you're working tight to get the tight deadlines, high expectations. I also see when someone comes onto the crew and they can be new, immediately they have it or they don't. Because uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. when someone has it, it's outstanding. Like you can, they just yes, placement of something and you know immediately like, oh my gosh, they've got it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it can be taught. You can learn it as you go, but when it's instinctive, yes. it's fresh. Yes. And you always are gonna stand out for having like that eye. It's like people always say to me like, oh, good day for such good taste. And I'm like, there's yeah. no such thing as yeah. good taste. This Versace look, you know, with all the gold and the lavish and I mean, yeah. That's good taste to someone. Yeah. Well, and nice. then your minimalist uh, Swedish, you know, temple look, you know, the hige or whatever it was yeah. called. That's good taste to someone. Those two people are not good. May, might agree that they both have beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's why we created Branca, you know, to kind of make sure people clarify what, what they are talking about. Yeah. Because otherwise. But a thing that's also important in set design is having an interest in the character. So you actually have to understand like characters or be interested in the story or the actor or the character you're talking about. Because if, he, if you're talking about like a young, you know, distraught girl in her 20s uh, with like deep character mm -hmm. uh, description, Everything has to be there in her apartment. That yes, you kind her. of need to get into you know, it, right? The ashtray is one that she stole from a hotel when she was staying in this, you know, in Brussels overnight. And, you know, like everything has to be brought back to yeah, her yeah. place that means something. So the set designer would kind of um, imagine all these details and, and would bring that. It's, yeah. 
So there's no like somebody puts the guidelines, it should be like that. It's the set designer to come up with everything, right? And fill in that space. Yeah, and, uh, you use the script mm -hmm. and then you'll talk to the director often about, you know, who is this person? Like what books are on the shelf in the house? To use an example of a film we did before and it was about a uh, sort of um, an assassin. Yeah. So, what books are on his shelf, you know, and then, but be surprising about it, you know, because, you know, you could have like a book of Monet on a script. Yeah, yeah. But it's so, so you can, you can like develop your characters and it's really fun to do that. And then the actors always bring a lot mm -hmm. to the table, like even, even in a music video, you know, like mm -hmm. I've had like big musicians show up with, <laughs> I bought some props for the, the dressing table. Here's a picture of my mother and here's, you know, like this is my, this is going to mean a lot to me when we're filming. I'm going to be able to look at this. So what was maybe some like moment from like working with Madonna, for example, that really um, stuck with you or that something? We, we were doing a personal story of her own mm -hmm. um, and this was the story about the dressing table because we had done a, a bedroom for her and it was like a bunker and she had had a lot of say in it and uh, she showed up on the morning very casually, you know, with some bags and like no massive entourage, just really just there, like to work, basically, <laughs> like there to work. And she's like, here, these should go on the set. And, and uh, you know, one was like actually a really beautiful Frida Kahlo photograph. And it was as pristine as like that, you know, piece of artwork over there. And I said, but if we put this on the set, we're gonna have to throw dust all over it and like make it look like it's been part of like this apocalyptic set. And she's like, oh, okay, all right, well, just be careful with it, you know? And so we put it on the set and then she just brought out all her other personal objects and we put them around the dressing table in the mirror. And I just thought, like, that's caring. That, that's why all of the work ends up to be so iconic. Yeah, yeah, she really has her like signature. Like, contribution yeah. and not just showing up and being yeah, told, yeah, yeah. you know, by a director. Like, everyone, on that job, you know, worked so hard to that, but her input was so much. And it was really, really fun to, to you know, work with uh, such an icon. Lady Gaga is a hard worker too. That's the thing. Everyone is a hard worker. I, I yeah. they, they show up for work and they are, I mean, Madonna, just to go back to like one of them, I, it was four or five in the morning and we still had to drive at least an hour back to Los Angeles. So, you know, we knew that it was a long night still to go and we were still filming and she just like threw herself down, face down in this dirt and, and dancing and working so hard. And it was such a great moment like to, to just see the dedication to the mm -hmm. performance. A hard worker thanks the crew, you know, everyone gets like a solid thank you at the end. It's not taken for granted. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, but unfortunately, I can have nothing but great things to say. Yes. And that's just so nice, you yes, know? Yes, totally. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that now, because everyone is so much more accessible because of Instagram, for example, you know, you can get private messages from people who are, you know, in Iran or in India and they say, where shall I start? And I, it's always the same advice, like, you know, find the people in your city who are working, who you admire, and just just send them a message. Like, I, there's plenty of, I actually got, I actually hired an Uber driver. Uh, like, I was, yeah, he, he was driving me to the airport and he was from Uganda. And I asked him, and he was quite young, and I said, oh, you know, how long have you been living here? Just chit chat. And he said, well, I really want to work in the film business, and, but, and I've done my film studies in Boston, but I've moved out to LA and I don't have any contacts. And I said, okay, 
I am getting on a plane and I'm going on vacation. And then after that vacation, I'm going to go and do a movie in Hungary. So this was July. I said, uh -huh. so I'm not going to be back in LA till November. Uh -huh. But if you remember on November 27th to send me a text saying, hey, it's Frank, uh, just reminding you. And now that you're back from you doing the film, I'm available for work. I said, just if you remember to do that, then I will hire you. Uh -huh. And he was like, wow, okay, great. So Did he, it happen? Well, he kind of lucked out because like at the beginning of November, I found out we're not going to fly back until like November 29th. So I sent him a text. I said, okay, the new date. <laughs> so I gave him a little reminder. New date is November 29th. And so he wrote back to me immediately. He said, thank you goodness, you texted me because he'd lost his phone with my contact. He said, so it wasn't going to happen. So I'm so glad that your date to come back has pushed. Now I have your contact. You'll hear, you'll hear from me on the 29th. I woke up on the 29th. Ding! <laughs> Frank texted me. So I hired him on a couple jobs and he was great and he was really into it. And they were just like small, like couple days here, couple days there. And then we got the Lady Gaga video. Oh, and I said, okay, Frank, I've got a, a, a long 10 days. So make sure your Uber people know that you can't do the Uber driving because I can book you for this. And he was like, this is great. Okay, thank you. So he showed up to work on the set. And I, you know, I said, okay, gave him his little, the things that needed to be done. And then I said, oh, come over here and just stand here right now because we're about to start filming and the talent's coming onto the set. I never told him who we were working with. Oh no, so what happened? And we were standing there and Lady Gaga walked out and I just saw Frank go. <laughs> and he looked at me, he's like, is that Lady Gaga? And I was like, yeah, I was so excited for him. And, and he was like, oh my gosh. And then he, he was like, Emma, one day I'm going to bring you to Uganda and you'll be treated like my family is going to give you the best dinner ever.